Coming up, reigning PDA Player of the Year, E.J. Tackett is back on Fox Sports and back in his home state of Indiana, looking for his first title of the season in a tournament that also features Illinois Classic winner, Marshall Kent. And the pro with the fro, two-time major champion, this year's U.S. Open champion, Kyle Troop. The Just Bear PBA Indiana Classic is next on FS1. From David Smalls Championship Lanes in Anderson, Indiana, we continue to go bowling across America. Welcome to the Just Bear PBA Indiana Classic. A capacity crowd is ready for an Indiana native, E.J. Tackett, our top seed tonight. The reigning PBA Player of the Year, Marshall Kent, eyeing his second win in three weeks. Kyle Troop, the U.S. Open champion, and some new faces, too. This field, Benji Martinez and Zach Wilkins looking to be contenders here tonight. As we welcome you to our broadcast desk, everybody, I'm John Phantom. My partner is the Hall of Famer in season 25, calling the BBA, Randy Peterson. All right, Randy. E.J. Tackett, four straight weeks that he has made a show. He has yet to break through for that first win of 2024. What are you seeing from him? What I'm seeing is what everybody knows about E.J. Tackett. It's just pure greatness. This guy, fourth telecast in a row. What a season he had in 2023, capturing the United States Open Player of the Year. But on television in 2024, it's been a bit of a struggle, right? Here we see E.J hoisting that beautiful trophy, but this season at the U.S. Open, that Aaron shot cost him that match. Then in Chicago, this Aaron shot, the big four against Jake Peters, cost him that match. Keep in mind, though, this guy is one game away tonight from capturing his 22nd title. That would tie the great Marshall Holman in career titles. And he's only 31 years of age. Tackett, one of the faces of this sport. Who could he potentially have to go through tonight? A familiar face to him, the U.S. Open champion, Kyle Troop. Kyle Troop, after his U.S. Open hangover, he's back with a vengeance. And he said it's all been a mental battle for him, but mentally he's in a great spot. And how about Marshall Kent? He is in the best place in his life these days and finally living up to his true potential. Kent rededicating himself to the sport, one of the special stories of this early season. But is tonight EJ's night in his home state of Indiana? Our Kimberly Pressler is with the reigning PBA Tour Player of the Year. Thanks. So EJ, you know, a lot of athletes would be satisfied with the fact that they made a top five telecast because it's extremely tough to get here. But you made that tough road almost look easy making four consecutive shows. But I know for a fact that you are not satisfied just making shows. But unfortunately, you haven't been able to crack that winner's circle just yet this season. So what's been holding you back? Uh, you know, in, in Chicago, I, I didn't bowl very good. At the U.S. Open, I had an opportunity and made an errant shot. Uh, last week in Missouri, I did everything I could do in the 10th frame, and uh, Simo got up and did what Simo does and threw a double to, to knock me out. But I'm going to take the positives out of that three shots that I threw last week, um, you know, getting up and actually doing it when I needed to. Hopefully I can, you know, bring that into tonight and uh, throw some good shots, put up a good score, and hopefully it wins. And you're back home in Indiana. You've, you've bowled here for 20-plus years. What's it mean to have this crowd behind you? I mean, it's, it's always really cool to be in Indiana. Uh, obviously, we were at Woodland Bowl a few weeks ago for the U.S. Open. I made the show there. Um, I just I love being able to bowl in Indiana. I finally got the win in Indiana last year at the U.S. Open. Hopefully, I can bring home title number two tonight. All right. Well, we'll see you in the finals because you are our number one seed tonight. He has won high school state championships right here at Championship Lanes as well. As we take a look at the step ladder, we'll begin with Zach Wilkins out of Canada versus Benji Martinez from Mexico. players with very little television experience and being under the bright lights 
of the PBA Tour, the biggest stage in our sport, is uh, about as nerve-wracking as it can get. You're just trying to keep your feet underneath you for a couple of shots. Both these players are shaking like they did an all-night bender in front of the espresso machine at Starbucks. Bolton's making his first TV appearance in five years. It's the 2019 Roth Holman doubles, and now here is a young talent from Mexico, Benji Martinez. What do you see in his skill set? Well, he's a, a, a very traditional player, he uses his thumb. It's, it's just kind of a, a little more old school with some power. And he starts with a scenario right off the bat. Two, four, five, eight. Otherwise known as the bucket. Both players starting with Black Hammer 78. And that is a urethane bowling ball, and that's why you don't see a whole lot of shape. An unbelievable six game set of 1632 in qualifying earlier this week. He came up three pins shy of the PBA record shared by Norm Duke and Dave Watka. Yeah. He is an alum of Savannah College of Art and Design. Yeah, went to SCAD. They have a great bowling program hey there these days. Hey, we are here for you from Savannah. We drink that fuego tomorrow. And there's, there's the team mom. I know her personally. Her name is Ganja Kurt. Um, her daughter was just to her right, Lara. I used to coach Lara back when she was a 12-year-old. Now she's at SCAD. They live in... Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina, and just some of the greatest people you'll ever meet. But big shout out to Ganja and the rest of the Kurt family. No, 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 urethane. You're not supposed to do that. Solid nine, a little loft on that left lane. You're gonna notice the right lane is gonna be tighter down lane. We'll see that throughout the telecast. A little more friction on this left lane. And it showed right there. And again, that shout out coming from down at SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design, Benji and an alum. And we're in the colors of the school tonight. Just 26 years of age. I asked Ganja, what does she hey. do for the team? She says, I'm the team mom. And I cheer the loudest. <laughs> What you would expect <laughs> from a team mom. And how about that smile? If you want a re rack, you have to tell them immediately. You can't look first and then decide a re rack. Okay. So if you want a re rack, just know that you have to say it right when you come off the approach. Right. In order to get a re rack, you, it has to be your first order of business. And that's what Dino is explaining to Benji. You get to see what a new kid on the block is going through. We sometimes, with faces like Tackett, Troop, that we've got tonight, we, we take those things for granted. Those guys are vets. They know what they're doing, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. they know how to manage the clock. They know how to, when to take re-racks and when not to. They know when to ice their opponent, getting up to the 10th frame. But there again, you see what I was mentioning earlier, the tightness of the right lane down lane. Zach Wilkins talked to us about using his rev rate, slower speed, and shaping it this way. Well, and, and what we're seeing here in match number one is both players using your thing, and we saw that throughout the week uh, during all the qualifying. Players would start with the urethane for a game or two, and then as soon as that look went away, as you take a look at his arsenal, When that look went away, the players then immediately jumped into reactive resin and moved in. We asked him who he's been playing for all week. He said his fiance, Tegan. Tegan's mom right now dealing with a medical emergency. Our thoughts and prayers. Let me hear you, Anderson. And there's a pumped up Zach Wilkins 
playing for his better half and her family tonight. Bucket last time on this right lane, Benji's first shot. Did you mention he's from Guadalajara? And the center that he's that he bowls out of? I did an exhibition there. Still leaves a four. So he goes light, and then this time it's a little high, leaving the four pin. He's just micromanaging and again just trying to get his nerves in check. He talked about that run that he had in that six game set in the second round of qualifying here. Goes from 276 to 279, 277, then a 300. He was exceptional to get to this stage. Need more evidence? Break this down, RP. Yeah, well, take a look at those scores. And uh, his countrymen would say he was in fuego. And just missing the record by three pins. Muy bien. For Benji Martinez. He's got a rich personality. His family, which Kimberly will get to here, they're here tonight. They wasted no time in getting here. His first show was during COVID, so they couldn't be here. He strikes. You heard him say, vamos, let's go, let's go. There's his family right there. Mom, dad, and his brother. So back to Wilkins from Canada, from Barrie, Ontario. Mm. Wouldn't give. It asked for a date, but was rejected. Sounds familiar. Right. Two pin, two pin once right. again on the right lane. He moved a board right on that shot there and still left the two pin. Again, big scores all week long. All but one of our finalists tonight averaged over 240. And cleans that up. Let's take a look at tonight's Brunswick oil pattern, the Viper 37. Yeah, 37 feet, 12, 300 games. And I mean, the, the players just destroyed them. And when speaking with some of them, they said, well, they were PBA easy, not league easy, PBA easy. And, and the guys just lit them up this week. That they did. And Zach talked with us about being able to slow his speed and getting that accuracy. Oil allowing him to use reverend and that slower speed. Mr. Wilkins with a strike. A one and oh. One and oh. One with your feet, I stay the same. to Mr. Martinez. Guadalajara, Mexico. That's where he's from. Moved up to Chicago two years ago. Just to continue to get reps, get consistency. Yeah. Messenger. Yeah. Flat 10. The urethane flaccid 10 right there. He goes bucket, then he goes high with a four pin, and this time it's that flat 10. Hmm. At what point does he say, you know what? Maybe I gotta get out of the urethane ball. 
did that earlier this week when he needed to make the move. He was, he talked about being, making his moves with conviction. Let's go to Kimberly. Well, John, you mentioned earlier that Benji's parents, Patricia, Benjamin, and his brother Dario are in the audience watching him compete live on TV for the very first time. They got in late last night from Guadalajara, Mexico, so I was able to speak to his brother Dario right before the telecast, and he said that he and Benji used to watch the PB on TV as kids, and now being here watching his brother is like living an absolute dream. Not a very good ball reaction. I mean, it's a little inconsistent, wouldn't you say? One light, one high, one yep. light, one high. He's trying to find it. That being said, for him to come three pins shy of that record for a six game set to only Norm Duke and Dave Waka. He just said, I was throwing great. I was carrying everything. You're getting messengers. Everything clicked. But as you described last week, being on TV, totally different monster. Yes, sir. Until you've been here and done this, uh, it's a completely different animal. Who will conquer that monster in Indiana? We're just getting rolling with the Indiana Classic from Championship Lanes. Martinez and Wilkins dueling. Yeah. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Just Bear. When your chicken is just there, it's easy to see the possibilities. No antibiotics ever, no artificial ingredients or preservatives, and packed with protein. Just right, Just Bear. Learn more at JustBearFoods.com. Let's take a look at our Bowl TV highlights. Benji Martinez in his final game of qualifying rolls a strike earlier this week and locked him into this show. Nobody could catch him. Martinez stayed off Arturo Quintaro and Anthony Simonson with final qualifying games of 268 and 266. Pretty impressive company, Randy Peterson. Yeah, very impressive. And uh, Simo, Arturo both made a late run at Benji and he didn't falter. Zach Wilkins with a two pin lead right now. Talked about this black hammer, what it was able to deliver for him this week. Wilkins getting up. And tonight he's got this man in attendance. This is amazing folks, his dad Rick. Rick has gone through extreme radiation and chemotherapy and three weeks ago completed his victory over throat cancer. Yeah, I mean, just a, an incredible story. And I mean, wow, what a, what a great, great ending to all of his, all this hardship that he went through and to have Zach um, be able to do this in front of his dad is, it's incredible. Mom Leanne here, brother Steven, special night for the Wilkins family. Let's go! And Zach, you're going. All right, so we're finally starting to heat up. Remember, big scores all week long, and it's only the fifth strike between these two players through six and a half frames, four of them coming from Zach Wilson, but that's three in a row, and now he increases his lead to 22. He said time and again this week, we asked him, what's been the key? What's been the key? He said, mentality, playing for these people, playing for my dad. Now can Martinez answer? Benji has caught some tough breaks. And I think his speed's just too fast, especially on that right lane. And there's just not enough motion going through the pins. Remember week 10 prior to that shot. And this time it's the shaker seven. Talked about that ball change. He's he's pot committed now. Mm -hmm. Five nine spares if he covers this through seven frames. As bold for the Mexico national team. 
His father got him into the sport. But right now, he finds himself in a hole. Well, this young man, keep in mind that he has to bowl the PTQs all season. And that's the pre-tournament qualifiers. So just to get into the tournament proper, and that was an additional seven games for Benji. Had Nate Bagger as part of that PTQ. And now, in his second television appearance ever, 2021 PBA Players Championship Southwest Regional Finals. <laughs> Three years ago, and there it is. It's more like it for Mr. Martinez. Subtle move on the left lane for Benji, and this one finally strikes, but in my opinion, in order for him to have any chance of winning this match, he has to strike out. Kicking the 10 out. I mean, can I get a re rack, please? What, he's taking that re rack now here on the left lane, but in what sport does power not reign supreme? Six to the sidewall, kicks the 10 out like Jackie Chan. This man is feeling good right now. Locked in with his game, eighth year pro. He's 31 years of age. He was 50th in points last year. Oh. Boom! Yeah, all but over now. He just needs really good count in the 10th. Nine would get him, nine out would get him to 226. Martinez can strike out for 226. So Martinez has to strike out to have any chance. Put some pressure, a little pressure anyway, on Zach Wilkins. Winner gets a matchup with the United States Open champion. Yeah, the US Open champs the three seed here, Kyle Troop. Martinez needs it, gets it. Well, he finally fitted into the one three on the right lane. Still a little hope left. Again, two players with very little television experience, so you never know what could happen. Martinez is just thinking, man, I just need to strike out to give Zach Wilkins something to think about. EJ Tackett made Anthony Simonson, well, we thought made him think last week, and. And then Simo stepped up to that right lane and was unbelievable. Yeah, well, you heard what EJ said, Simo doing Simo stuff. I mean, hmm. you know, he stayed with a ball that he left three consecutive week tens with and just somehow found a way to get it to double. Oh. Martinez making a push. Yeah, good shot. So if he strikes out, he'll force Wilkins to mark. A little bit softer speed on that left lane, but he's also a little bit farther left. And needs two more just like that one. Here's the thing. This kid at 26, he's just getting started. Yeah. He's got a lot to look forward to. Has found it. Stand up, Anderson. Well, this one matters. Mm -hmm. Strike here, and he forces Wilkins to mark. If he doesn't strike here, he gets nine. Wilkins can get nine first ball and win. Nothing easy. 
it's not easy winning on the oh. PBA Tour, my friend. He showed so much grace in qualifying earlier this week, and that shot we showed you at the top of this segment. Benji Martinez! Oh. Oh, late surge, and listen to this crowd. Well, it was a nice way to finish, but it, it might be a little too late for Benji Martinez. Now Wilkins just needs nine on this ball, doesn't even need the mark. With his fiance Tegan, having a watch party back in Kansas City. With her mother going through a medical emergency this week. With dad, here tonight is his inspiration, beating cancer. Zach has a powerful story. He's met adversity this week and now trying to book a matchup with Kyle Troop. Zach Wilkins. Yeah. Moving on. Let's go. Right here. Well, his execution has been great coming down the stretch here in game one. That's a six bagger, and he's been within an inch of every shot he's thrown in terms of accuracy. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go. Mr. Wilkins, your Saturday night in Indiana will continue. He'll meet a man who experienced some title glory of his own just a few weeks ago in Indiana, Kyle Troop. The other one. Oh, oh I, I got it. I got it. <laughs> What's he doing here, Randy? He's going to look at the uh, reactive resin for his fill shot. He wants to see what kind of shape and motion he's gonna get out of this in case he has to jump into the reactive. Look how much farther left. And the down lane reaction. Look how much difference those two lines are. 2.59 for Zach Wilkins. Guess who's up next? The king of the US Open this year. The pro with the fro. Kyle Troop is next. Three weeks ago, Sunday, February 4th, U.S. Open presented by Go Bowling at Royal Pin Woodland in one of the greatest step ladders in PBA history, featuring 89 titles and 28 major titles. Kyle Troop, the third seed, defeated E.J. Tackett, and Jason Belmonte who reached the championship match against Anthony Simonson, and he would clinch in the ninth frame, his second career major in his 11th PBA Tour title. Troop Nation is ready. Let's revisit our stepladder because now Troop will meet Zach Wilkins with Marshall Kent the two, each eight Zach at the one. Yeah, and that was after the slow start, the players really picked it up late. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 12 out of 13 thrown the last half of the game. What'd you like most about Wilkins? Guy sacked up, man. He got up there and he clutched out. I mean, he threw the shots when you have to throw the shots. I mean, that's all you can ask for, right? Bingo. And throws another. Make the shots when it matters. And that's what he did. So here he is. Kyle Troop, such a fan favorite on the PBA Tour. The Bob Ross of bowling. Son of Guppy, the eight-time PBA Tour winner. He talked with us this week about his mentality off winning the U.S. Open. Had a couple of, of tough weeks. Mr. Troop off to a strong start. And Kyle using your thing to start game two. That is an IQ 78. And there's... A fashion statement being made right there by Kyle Troop. That's that's a a uni from his his dad way back in the day. That's right. Guppy wore this outfit, these colors in 1998 at the Erie Open. They wore something similar to this for the King of the Lanes family edition as well. Champ has 
just started with a double. It's time. Oh, and I think there was probably a little bit of a U.S. Open hangover for Kyle. It, in, I mean, it's pretty easy to understand. It's such a grind and mm -hmm. a brutal event. I think it's the hardest tournament to win on the PBA Tour. And, and so, uh, you know, it, it, it makes sense that maybe he was kind of somewhere else mentally for a couple of weeks, but not anymore. It's interesting because you want the reward, all the celebration of winning that. But on the PBA Tour, it's short memory. It's the definition of short memory. Yeah, you're right, John. There's no time to exactly. celebrate. I mean, you get done winning, exactly. collect your check and trophy, sign some autographs, and then you're on to the next week. And if things go south, people don't. You're only as good as your last performance, right? So I, there's no zero time to celebrate, unless it's the season-ending event or something you get to go home and share it with your family and friends. But these players, they pack it up and they move on to the next week. Mm. Not good for Wilkins there. Not good. And open and... You see Troop as he's talking to himself. Oh, look here, this mistake. Yeah, not what you want to do, especially against a player like Kyle Troop. And I wonder if, if going up against Kyle is somehow maybe mentally affecting Zach. <laughs> nice bounce back shot, though. But according to Lane Talk stats, nobody missed more 10 pins out of our five finalists this week than Zach Wilkins. And for more information, you want to be a better bowler, head on over to lanetalk.com. All of our great stats brought to us by our good friends there. Now let's see if uh, Kyle Troop does what he normally does, and that's jump all over opportunities given to him. His tour rep. Boom. Jim Callahan gave him a book this past week. Kyle said he had not read a book since being in about seventh or eighth grade. He read the book Holes. He got the book Mind Gym, an yeah. athlete's guide to inner excellence. He said it really helped him recalibrate and yep. just settle in mentally. And I think we're seeing that right now. We certainly saw this week. And off to a great start here against Zach Wilkins in game two. Reading the book, An Athlete's Guide to Inner Excellence. He's off to an excellent start. Sometimes a good read will help you succeed. That's a good one, John. Check out this shot by Kyle Troop and watch what he does when he hits the foul line. You can feel it as soon as it leaves your hand, mm. and Kyle Troop knew that one was perfect. Is there any better feeling? What, when you know? No, I mean, yeah, no. It's, it's what you... It's what you work for, it's what you practice, it's what you try to, to obtain each and every shot. And it's such a field sport that you know as soon as it leaves your hand, good or bad. Does it have a chance? It has no chance, or it's gonna be perfect. PBA All-Star Weekend is coming up. The All-Star Skills Showdown will be Friday, March 15th, 6 Eastern on FS1. PBA Legacy Cup, Legends and Rising Stars, Saturday, March 16th, 1 Eastern on FS1. And then Go Bowling, PBA, NASCAR Invitational at Phoenix Raceway on St. Patrick's Day, Sunday, March 17th, 1 Eastern on Fox. Voting for PBA All-Star Weekend is live now at PBA.com. It will remain open through noon on Tuesday, February 27th. E.J. Tackett on top. Kyle Troop, Bill O'Neill, the points leader. Filling out the top three. Harriet. Yeah. Wilkins is there, rising baby. there, too. He's four. Double for Zach. And by the way, the four players with the highest number of votes will compete in the PBA Legacy Cup. Legends and Rising Stars.
Pete Weber among the legends. You can see that on FS1, Saturday, March 16th at 1 Eastern. I heard there might be a Norm Dukes sighting as well. Is that true? You would be correct. Really cool that we'll see the legends in action. He got that urethane ball back from a spot I didn't think he could get it back from. And talking with the players, I was like, well, how far right can you get it back from? And they said, well, the third board is the gutter. You get it anywhere right of that, and it goes in. U.S. Open crown places him third in points through the four title events. Followed by Marshall Ken, E.J. Tackett. Bill O'Neill in the midst of that potential career year. Not on this show, but what a season he's having. Great season thus far for Bill. Whew. On fire. <laughs> Kyle Troop's hair's on fire tonight. Oh, Holy oh, smokes! Like I said, it's time. Oh, it is time. Indiana having some beverages. Are they at Kyle Troop's party? Mr. Wilkins would like to say something about that. The night is young, America. How many times do you see a player in the midst of fighting for a title reading Kyle Tripp started this book, Mind Gym, An Athlete's Guide to Inner Excellence by Gary Mack. He started the book Monday. He's almost done. Will he finish reading it before winning a title tonight? Reading during a match, have you ever seen anything like that? No. Did you read? I, I used to read the USA Today because they, they would give it away at the hotels for free. I would read that. You're cheap. Oh, Wilkins oh, strikes. Oh, Getting it back from that spot's a good sign for both players. A couple boards right on that right lane, but it gets back. Front six for Troop, and it's a four bagger for Wilkins. Zach, talk to us about that slower speed, shaping it. Well, with the urethane balls, the players are going to go, they're going to go a lot straighter. There's not a lot of shape to it, uh, but speed is very crucial. He said the oil pattern allowed him to use rev rate. Slow that up. He's bowling nice Let's right go. now, and, and you know, <laughs> you got to look at the second frame when he left the 10 pin and whiffed it. And then Kyle's just all over it with the front six, so not, not a whole lot that Zach can do about that, but another nice shot. It's five in a row for Zach Wilkins, trying to get back into this here in game two. Looking to his fiance, Tegan, and her family back in Kansas City watching. Told you about mom dealing with a medical emergency. Our thoughts and prayers with Tegan and her family. Back to Troop. U.S. Open champion. That's been perfect. Kyle Troop has the first seven strikes toward bowling a 300 game. Should he or any of the pros on today's show bowl a perfect game, everyone in America can receive a free game of bowling courtesy of Go Bowling. To pre-register, visit GoBowling.com and sign up for the Go Bowling free America promotion. Well, speaking to a lot of the players this week, they all said the same thing that the lanes in this oil pattern were very conducive to bowling a perfect game on television. And I just hope I didn't jinx Kyle. Something we have not seen since June 26th of last year in Arlington. 
Jason Belmonte, who became the first player to record three televised 300 games. She didn't jinx him, Randy. It's getting real. They can feel it here at Anderson. Been done 36 times. Kyle, the number three seed, remember when he won the United States Open, he was the number three, three seed. seed. They say it's a magic number. Oh! Wilkins is doing his part, though, to stay in this thing. Come on, one right here. Registration for the 2024 PBA LBC National Championships is now open to bowlers of all skill levels and from all centers. The PBA LBC National Championships is heading to a new location outside Chicago and includes two new junior divisions. You can compete in singles as well as optional doubles and team events. Even combine your scores with the pros. Enter today at pba.com slash LBC tournament. And bowl for a lot of money. A lot. 25000 <laughs> Congrats tonight to Wilkins. Randy, what a job he's done responding. I mean, he's hanging. If he makes that spare in the second, he's on a 280 pace. Unfortunately, Troop is perfect through eight. But Wilkins keeps the pressure on. Troop has bowled a 300. Came back on television, it came back on June the 5th, 2022. And that was a day where Troop and Belmonte did it. Only time two televised 300 games had been bowled on the same day. That came out in Arlington. Give me Messenger, come on! Oh. The nerve. The nerve. Man. I'll never talk to the 10 again. I mean, forget the teaser. You know, if you're going to come across, at least take the 10. I watch the head pin. Looks like it's coming over, across with some really good intentions, and it's just like, hey, you want a hug? You want to snuggle? No. Want to go down? It's like going to McDonald's and getting a single. Just have the the double and end it. Don't try to be healthy. Tomorrow, the NASCAR Cup Series heads to Atlanta for some high-speed pack racing. Catch every turn to see who takes home the checkered flag for the Ann Better Health 400. We kick things off with the pre-race at 2 Eastern, and green flag drops at 3 on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Strike, spare, strike. He will shut out Zach Wilkins. Mm. So if he off. doesn't, if he doesn't strike on this ball, Zach still has a chance. Yeah. That was in. Kyle Troop. That was in, and it struck. That's a good sign, and that's part of the reason why the scores are so high this week. There's a little mistake room left and right of target. That's the just bare, just right strike. Kyle can get just right, right here with another strike. The Just Right Strike is brought to you by Just Bear, the mindful choice for high-quality protein with no antibiotics ever. Just Right, Just Bear. We got to get Kyle a gold hair pick. <laughs> Look at him. 
He's looking at reactive right there. Might be his ball that he goes to, even though he just shot 279. Believe it or not, players did it all week long. On fire. And he books a date with Marshall Kent. Can't wait to see you. He just heard Zach deliver a message to his fiance, Tegan. Hey, Zach Wilkins, you deserve a tip of the cap. Yeah, he did He did a really nice drive. Remember, 259 game one. He can strike out for 268. The guy's averaging in the 260s. It gets knocked out. Hey, look who's here. Marshall Kent. He's seeking a second PBA Tour title in three weeks. Next. Welcome back to Davids Falls Championship Lanes for the Just Bear Indiana Classic. It is stop number five on our PBA Tour season from Anderson, Indiana. And it's time to give you a PBA Elite League update. Earlier this week here in Anderson, PBA Elite League presented by Snickers held round seven and eight. Sean Rash led the Las Vegas high rollers along with A.J. Johnson and wins over the Akron Adams splitters. And the Motown Muscle, the High Rollers move to six and two on the season and claim a share of the league's best record with the New Jersey Kingpins. Good group with A.J. Johnson, Matt Russo, Sean Rash. And there's your standings. The Kingpins at six and two. Las Vegas High Rollers at six and two, and then Portland at five and three. What the hell's going on down there in Waco? I don't know. Parker and Simonelli, let's go guys, pick it up. The Wonders have some work to do. We'll be in Portland in September. We can't wait. John Fanta, Randy Peterson with you. So here we go. Kyle Troop, just insane what he was able to do, beating Zach Wilkins, who put together a great effort. And now it's Troop, Marshall Kent, and EJ Tackett. Yeah, big scores like we predicted off to a slow start. But man, they really picked up 20 strikes between the two players in that last match. But you know what, if Zach Wilson makes the 10 pin in the second frame, he could have struck out and won that game against Kyle. Well, that leads us to tonight's edition of Pressing Questions, partner. And I know that you feel passionately about this one because it's one that's on social media quite a bit. Are bowlers athletes? Yeah, that's the topic of tonight's Pressing Questions with Kimberly Pressler, presented by Go Bowling. Chris, what would you say is the biggest misconception about pro bowlers? That we eat pizza and drink beer while we bowl. Back in the day, pro bowlers were like maybe partiers, they didn't take care of themselves, but that's kind of gone all the way. Yeah, obviously, there's um, a part of bowling that's uh, a lot of fun for people. We go and have a few beers, uh, birthday parties, and I think that's really important for bowling. Um, but that isn't what we do. Man, the actual reality is these guys go to the gym, they work out, and they're in great shape. They're athletes. You can grab a lot of the really talented bowlers out here, and we're, we're pretty good at a lot of other things. Uh, you know, I may not be the, the, the best at a lot of things, but uh, we go to gym right now and beat you in a three-point contest. I guarantee that. All the young guys out here, like, we try to eat clean. We're resting. We don't know how these old guys used to do it by partying and bowling 12 or 20 games in a day. Physically, like, if non-bowlers come out here and bowl 50 games, their butt cheeks will be sore, their wrists and form will be sore. So we're athletes too, okay? <laughs> that That's is great. awesome. Marshall Kent, he feels like he's in the best athletic mental shape of his life. He's up next against Kyle Troop to meet EJ Tackett. This past Sunday, Pete Weber, PBA Missouri Classic at Enterprise Park Lanes in Springfield, Missouri. Fifth seed Anthony Simonson became the first person since Jason Belmonte last year at the Tournament of Champions to climb the step ladder to the title. He beat A.J. Johnson, Matt Russo, E.J. Tackett too to reach the championship match and defeated Bill O'Neill. What a scene between Simo and Pete Weber. Let's take a look at the other finishers this week at the Just Bear PBA. Indiana Classic. We told you about Benji Martinez being able to keep Quintero and Anthony Simonson just on the outside. You see Belmo, Tom Doherty, top 10. Big nasty finishing night. Nice week for Wes Mullott. Stu Williams had two 300 games. Marshall Kent, he was the winner of the Illinois Classic two weeks ago. His first win 
since 2017 as a single. Kimberly Pressler is with the Red Hot Marshall now. Thanks, John. So, Marshall, we saw you in the winner's circle just a few short weeks ago in Illinois, and now you made your second show here in 2024. So how much confidence did that win give you? Uh, you know, I felt pretty confident going into uh, the season because I've been putting the work in, but I think that win helped me take, helped take me to the next level uh, confidence-wise, and so I'm kind of riding the wave here to another show, and hopefully we can keep that momentum going. All right, well, good luck to you. So, thank you. So Kyle Troop is still reading, but there's a slight concern entering this matchup. What is it? Well, I just got the thumbs up from uh, <laughs> thumbs up while we're looking at Kyle's thumb. I, I just got yeah. the uh, the okay from Tim Mack, uh, the tour rep for Kyle. Kyle was high fiving somebody in the stands as we went to break, and he caught the guy's ring on his thumb. But Timmy just gave me the thumbs up right before coming back from break. He said he's good to go. Look, thumbs up or not, it's still something to pay attention to because of what we saw from him when he struck eight straight times to advance to this matchup. How is that thumb? Oh my God, there's that messenger again. It's not in the mood. That dirty, dirty devil. We've seen it three, four times tonight where it just has not come down. Well, this isn't the typical messenger that we see the two-handers with all that power lead because typically it comes across the lane a lot faster than that. Cleans that up. But after an eight-bagger to start in his previous matchup, a spare here. Here he is. Marshall Kent, one of the best stories on the tour this year. Rededicating himself in Michigan. Holly Lanes, his home center. Getting his sixth title at the Illinois Classic, but his first win as a single in seven years. Uh -oh. oh my goodness gracious. Good start. <laughs> and he has his own finger issue. Yeah, he's got that ring finger taped up pretty good, and he was trying to figure out a way to to keep the tape from coming off, he has a really good gouge in that ring finger that's uh, been kind of bothering him for a couple of weeks, but he figured out a way to super glue it. And that's adrenaline, that shot right there that went in the ditch. Going with a GB4 hybrid to start. You see his fingers are all taped up, just a, his hand taking a beating. 241 average this week. And that's going to be the typical miss. Dust yourself off. A challenging start as we take a look at Marshall's arsenal. Yep, GB4 hybrid. So he's using reactive resin, and he's going to be in and shaping it. I'll tell you what. A couple weeks ago in Chicago, some of the best shots late in that title match for Marshall Kent ever. All off work. He said, I just, I reestablished my work ethic. No way. It's more like it, yes. No way can that stand up. You know, and if there's ever a player to root for, it's that guy right there, Marshall Kent. Why? He's just a genuine great guy. <laughs> I've done exhibitions. Uh... Over, all over the world, primarily in Asia with Marshall Kent. Um, spent a lot of time with him. He's just he's just as genuine as they get. He was in EJ Tackett's wedding. Marshall and Kyle Troop have met once on television. Title match of the 2015 PBA Wolf Open in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Troop won that one, 229 to 179. But close to a decade since they've met on TV. True strikes. Troop looks over at Strike Trap, get his numbers dialed in, and he's staying with the urethane ball this far. You can see just how big a difference there is between reactive resin and the urethane.
Kyle talked with us about his speed control this week. You just heard him say control, folks. Softer speed. He didn't drill any more balls after his second round of qualifying. Yeah, he didn't need to. Everything he threw was striking. He didn't need anything else. If it ain't broke. Uh-oh. Can we talk after I'm done? Come on, guys. Just wait till I'm done with my approach, please, whoever that was. We certainly never intended to disturb the players. Tomorrow on FS1, Caitlin Clark, the reigning player of the year, Wooden Award winner, first team All-American, and now the all-time leading scorer in NCAA women's history, takes the court as fourth-ranked Iowa hosts Illinois. It all tips off at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. So the difference in the two pieces of equipment these players are using, one reactive, one you're thinking. Marshall Kent is a good 13 and a half boards left of Kyle at the laydown. And seven boards at the arrows. Nice little break there. Caving in the bucket late. One pin took a high jump there. Marshall Kent is starting to boil. Boom. He's in the best place in his life he's been in a long time. And then you talked about it, the hard work and dedication is starting to pay dividends for Marshall Kent. Troop of 15th year pro. <laughs> After a hot star, Nate Bagger. Deadwood. You got Deadwood in the left gutter on that lane is Kyle. Here's a replay of Kyle's shot where he gets this one inside a target. That one was pretty much right over second arrow. And remember, we've seen some shots. We've seen some shots out to the two and a half board. So there is room, there is forgiveness, but Have just not that much. The winner of this matchup will meet EJ Tackett, who is seeking his first win of the 2024 season in a fourth consecutive showman. Re-rack for Kyle Troop on the left lane. Good tempo. We're still here. No, no. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? We got our answer. <laughs> How stubborn is that? It's not very friendly. Watch the head pin. Six goes around, just breathes on the 10. Look at that. That's ridiculous. It really is. Just say yes. It, it, it wanted to. Look out. All right. Okay. See him still messing with his hand. I'm wondering if his thumb's causing him any issues. 
That, that's just it. You get it, and that's what we were talking about earlier. Wait, ring on, and now my heartbeat is in my thumb. Could mm. be fucking broken almost. Did you yeah. just hear that? Yeah. Could be broken almost. He said he could feel his heartbeat in his thumb. Yeah, that, that's not good. That's not a good sign. No. Be, because and here's why. It's not just tonight. It's the upcoming weeks. And now Kent has momentum. Yep. It's piling on now. It's when, like, you're, you're a, a wide out. You know the safety has got a little bit of a hamstring injury. And, and you're the quarterback. You know you're just going to pick at him. Yeah, I never went further wide on a football field than left guard. But thank you for that. Glad that someone knows the feeling on the show. <laughs> Little friction on that lane, and he gets it inside, but just the four pin. We're going to try to get an update on Kyle Troop's thumb out of the break. The update right now is, is that it has a heart, heartbeat, and he made the insinuation there. You heard it directly from him. Could it be broken? For now, we'll go to a break. Could Marshall Kent be having a career year? A second win in three weeks would be a great indicator of it. EJ Tackett's waiting. Kent up on Troop and Anderson on a Saturday night. David Small's Championship Lanes and David Small, the proprietor here. David has hosted 89 PBA events, regionals, PBA 50, national tour. This is his first time on TV. David, thank you for all you've done for the great sport of bowling. He is one of the great partners the PBA has ever had. Absolutely. What a great man and, and just a great proprietor. So, Troop trails by 19 pins. And Kyle find it here with that injured thumb. He strikes. All right, let's go down to the floor and talk to Kyle Treats tour rep Tim Mack. The Hall of Famer, Timmy, what is the latest on Kyle Troop's thumb? Listen, it's, uh, he's just going to try to block it out of his mind. It's, uh, it's a little sore, but um, he's got a pretty strong mental game. So we're all, all, all engines go and moving forward. Thanks, Timmy. Interesting, a, a player that doesn't use his thumb has a thumb injury. Check this out. I think this is where it happened right here. Watch. Yeah, that's, that's where it happened. That big high five. I saw a ring. It was definitely in play. But Troop out of sight, out of mind. Hey, so we listened to him during the break talking with Tim Mack. He said, hey, I'm going to stay with that ball. I'm going to just make that a little bit of an adjustment. But if I catch four in a row, I'm right back in this. How about what he told us earlier today that he had a bit of a panic attack here over the last two weeks where he didn't make those shows. He really struggled. He almost had to break everything down and then build it back up to this week. Yeah, he got off to a bad start a couple of weeks ago. And like game three was ready to like just pack it up. And he's the US Open champ. That shows you how tough this sport is. Now Ken has been on fire tonight. That's power. 18.7 miles per hour. And this guy's starting to really build a story here. And I love the fact, I think he's an inspiration. 
to everybody because he totally fell out of love with the sport. He thought about packing it up at one point. Well, I think we're all very proud of him um, because he's doing what we all believed he could do. And now he believes it. Marshall believes it. I know how much pride you've got. You can sense it. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. There's a big miss left. And as uh, forgiving as the old pattern is, you can't miss like that. that one. And like I always say, every shot makes somebody happy. And this one made Kyle Chup happy. And Kyle can get right back into this match. I disagree. However, that could have gone a lot worse than it ended up. Uh, that could have gone a lot worse than where, than where it ended up for him to clean up a spare. He's yeah. fortunate to, to have a spare. I mean, he was fortunate to catch a piece of the head pin. And now Kyle Troop with a strike here will take the lead. Listen. of missing the cut. Just talked about having trouble with ball reaction. The PBA is proud to have Bowlers to Veterans. Link is the official charity of the PBA Tour. Since 1942, through the support of the bowling community, BVL has raised more than $56 million for veterans. To donate, go to BVL.org. I can't think of a better cause. I mean, it's what a privilege, an honor and a privilege to be associated with the vets. Given an opening, he takes full advantage. And that's just big heart as Tim Mack looks back at the booth and he gives us that heart sign. by a taser. Good pass. Good pass. <laughs> Marshall Kent can strike out and shoot 237. The problem is Troop can strike out for 248. How, how would you know that feeling? I've just watched cops before on television. Just move. Make a pass. All right. One open for Marshall, the front. Is that too much to overcome here? Needs it, gets it. All right, Randy. Another big miss left, but that is a huge, huge break for Marshall Kent. <laughs> Mammoth. He got away with it. It's almost like he's afraid to throw it right on that lane. Yes. Can he force Troop? Isn't it interesting? This is, could this be the second straight week where we see in the semifinal a strikeout and forcing Troop, forcing his hand? Can Kent put the pressure on Troop? Like we saw Tackett put the pressure on Simo. Yeah. One of the hottest players on tour. Oh! Kent, and that, that's not it. He couldn't overcome. 
coming too far left, Randy. He's so scared of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's afraid to get it to the right. I don't know why. That, that lane really peels back, and Marshall, the last three shots he's thrown on that lane, have been big misses to the left. Right, come on, Bob. 224 Fort Kent. And right now, Kyle Troop needs a mark. Good count. 17 pin fill to win. So a mark here will. In control. Just got to give this thing down to. All will do it. Control. Reading Mind Gym, an athlete's guide to inner excellence. Trying to write a story of his own tonight. Come on, Drew! Little left. He's got to cover it. Little left. A little left, just a board left for Kyle Troop on that shot, but 10, put, 10 pins should be no trouble for Kyle. Spare an eight, seal the deal. You would think. That a 10 pin should be no trouble for the days. So now he needs eight. To time beat, out. tap in, you take a timeout. Tell me a good one here, best one in the game right now, okay? Good rhythm, good tempo, make sure your hand's in a good spot. Go be great, go be great. Tim Mack tell him, go be great. So he needs eight pins to win and, and meet EJ Tackett, which folks, could you ask for good tempo. a more dramatic Saturday in night in this sport than that? Oh, here in control here. Oh, yeah. We're hearing the lines of this book from him. Be in control. Kyle Troop, you better take out that book. You've got some more reading to do, fella. He's made and tack it for a title on a Saturday night in Indy. What a great touch he put on that show for the or on that shot for the win. Giving it just enough to come around the corner to catch Tad. Guess what, folks? Tack it. True. Uninterrupted final next. Welcome back to the Just Bear Indiana Classic. We're down to EJ Tackett and Kyle Troop. The Indiana boy is going, going to win on this Indiana night. We'll see. You've got the reigning player of the year versus the 2021 player of the year and the last two United States Open champions, EJ Tackett versus Kyle Troop. Could you ask for a better Saturday night in Anderson? The drama about to unfold. Another Tackett versus Troop showdown. Uninterrupted final is ahead. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Just Bear. When your chicken is just there, it's easy to see the possibilities. No antibiotics ever, no artificial ingredients or preservatives, and packed with protein. Just right, Just Bear. Learn more at JustBearFoods.com. And by Go Bowling. For friends and family fun, log on to GoBowling.com to find a center near you. Oh my goodness, two of the faces of the sport. E.J. Tackett versus Kyle Troop, their fifth all-time head-to-head TV meeting. They met three weeks ago in Indiana. Indianapolis, to be exact here, is a look at these two players, a combined 32 titles. Yeah, and Troop's only lost E.J. Tackett came at last year's United States Open. Troop defeated Tackett 212 to 200 in their most recent meeting three weeks ago in Indianapolis. Oh. Oh. Ten, again. The fro got in the way of that messenger, couldn't tell. It did. 
Kyle Troop staying with the urethane ball thus far. What do you make of that? I'll never question anything Kyle Troop does. <laughs> 279, the first game with that ball. 227, the last game with that ball. And I think it's the safest play. He knows what it's going to do. It's going to, he's going to keep that ball on line into the pocket. Whether or not it strikes or not will remain to be seen. 36 total games Wednesday through Friday in qualifying. 64 players entered this field from qualifying round one to now. EJ Tackett's been no worse than second. He led the last four rounds. Is this his week? I think uh, when we talk about winning on the PBA Tour and how difficult it is, I think EJ Tackett is a great example of that. Look at how he's made four telecasts in a row now. I mean, without a victory, will tonight be his night? That is the question. It's a good time to go to last year's United States Open. E.J. Tackett earned the number one seed. Sound familiar? He defeated Kyle Troop 221 to 208. Ninth player in PBA history to capture the Triple Crown. His third career major, 17th PBA title. The Indiana man did it to break through and win that green jacket. Responds. Venom shock for EJ Tackett on both lanes. Watch six pins, second to the right, go around and just snatch the 10 pins life out of it. Boom. Great shot from our production crew. A little close up there, that six going into the 10. Good, good job, guys in the truck. Steve Grant, David Bruner, our producer. and David Newman, our director. Troop. And these two superstars have matched one another through two. This is gonna be a good old fashioned rock fight. Two of the best on tour. Kyle received the Dick Weber Polling Ambassador Award. Given to the athlete who has shown, consistently shown grace on and off the lanes. He's one of the great guys. Has a tremendous following. These two in this title match are revered. Uh-oh. He said he separated himself, Randy, over the last week, just from all the distractions, all the talk, all the hype. Yeah, this shot here just looks a little quick. Hmm. And now he's left himself with the 248. And you gotta be uh, you gotta be mindful of this one. to EJ, reigning player of the year. Last week, EJ Tackett did what he had to do, got up and made some great shots to force Anthony Simonson to do the same, and Simo did and went on to win. Let's see if EJ can execute like he did last week. Oh, he executes perfectly there, that was pretty. That bowling ball revving down the lane with some really bad intentions. <laughs> this is one of the most powerful guys, pound for pound, out here on the PBA tour. That elbow just 
snapping and wrist snapping at the point of release and just creates a ton of power. Look at his arsenal. Venom shock. Is in shock. Oh. He would throw urethane first game of every block, and then he was send a reactive all throughout the week. Yeah, like one game with the urethane. It was in, it, 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 he didn't care if he shot 300 the first game, 279 with that urethane ball. He's that game two. He's jumping the reactive. I like that he said getting the right ball to get through the pins correctly, and, and you said, "Well, expand on that." He goes, "Well, I, I just did it." Seems to do that a lot. <laughs> Troop strikes. I'm out. Time out. It's gotta be 19 at the arrows. Right around 19 with the black ball. Okay. All right, that's what we're going. Commit to it and go. Translate. Um, not sure if we're going to see a ball change or not. That was right over second arrow. And looks like maybe it going to an IQ tour. Mm. Yep, sure is, right there. You heard commit to it and go. And this is reactive. You're going to see a lot more shape with this ball for Kyle. Thought we might see this even sooner. Here it comes. <laughs> commit to it. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about you, but sometimes when when I need a satisfying moment, I reach for the Snickers. What about you? I've done it too many times. The satisfying moment of the match is sponsored by Snickers. Nothing satisfies like a Snickers. That's the look of satisfaction. Pretty good shot there for nine by E.J. Tackett. Six slingshots around the ten. And you're right-handed. It's not a friend of yours. He's bowled in this building for 20 years. A lot. Different regional events, high school state championships. He, he brought up the loss in the high school state finals before he brought up the win. That's how he's wired. And this graphic sums up EJ Tackett with the appropriate headline, Who's Your Daddy? Likes his home state. And that Pretty good it. stuff there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Champion at the US Open last year. We showed you that shot of his emotions. His wife, Natalie, they gave birth to Eddie the Third trip. In December, trip is doing great. Best part of having EJ. Four straight shows, we get a new picture every week. There, there's the Marshall Kent crossover on that left lane. You see that arm swing that goes out and then tucks back in, and that is part of the reason why EJ Tackett is so good. That swing direction gets that wrist and that hand in a really good spot, but that shot just left the target. Troop! This is a heavyweight clutch. And just like that, Kyle Troop takes the lead. What a beauty right here. Urethane on the right lane, reactive resin on the left lane. 
Timmy Mack just looked back at us and shrugged his shoulders like, I don't know. Well, An Athlete's Guide to Inner Excellence. Mind Gym, that book by Gary Mack. Kyle read it this week. He's almost done with it. He's found excellence tonight. And is finding excellence at the perfect time. What a ball change. I mean, just to go to the reactive on the left lane. We saw Marshall Kent struggle on this lane. EJ just crossed over in the last couple of shots on that left lane for Kyle Troop have been perfect. Back to the book. He's going to finish it. <laughs> He's going to finish that book. It's got to be on the last couple of pages. Man, has this lived up to the hype. Oh! Oh, do we have drama! for $25,000. Well, if you're a bowling fan, this is exactly what you wish for. Two of our best going at it. It's a one pin match through seven. My goodness. You gotta combine 32 titles. You've got six majors. We've got two of the last three players of the year. And all while that's happening, someone is reading a book. I'd say to that fan to wake up, but it's not a fan. Oh, no. oh it missed. No. It wanted to. That was just so bad. Make sure you don't do what you did last time. God. You know, we've oh. seen in the past with EJ at times, he gets a little Damn quick it. in the downswing, and when he does, his hand tends to fly around it early. You can see him motioning with that elbow. Still good enough to strike. Did you hear him? Don't do what you did last time. He had an issue with this hand, and all right. I mean, it was still good enough to strike. The messenger came flying across it in front. You can see him, yep, turned it early, turned it early, a little early. Troop can extend the lead to 22 with strikes in the eighth and ninth. Two of the PBA Tours heavyweights going at it. He began this month with a title in Indiana. U.S. Open. Now trying to close the month with an Indiana Classic title. Against one of Indiana's own. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Bucket was up for a second. Now it's just a five pin. There's the bucket right there. That is a great break. Wasn't a very sturdy bucket. Nobody misses the five pin, John. Nobody? I know this one dude that, that did <laughs> tournament of champions, but we don't need to talk about that. Let's move on. Ninth frame. Ninth and tenth coming up, one pin match. Both players working on a spare. Mm. You could cut the tension with a knife. This is the good stuff. The pro with the fro. Versus perhaps the best in the sport right now, Mr. Consistent. Well, now he's in jeopardy, in jeopardy of losing because he doesn't strike in the ninth. EJ Tackett can now strike out and shut out Kyle Troop. Really good shot by yeah. Kyle just to leave that 10 pin. EJ Tackett has to finish on that left lane, and it's been a little spotty the last couple times up for him.
hear that, Randy? Fastest one of the day? Yeah, it still looked like a pretty, pretty doggone good shot to me. So what's the key to this shot for Tackett? Execution. Just like he did last week. He said difference between losing and getting beat. Cannot believe that didn't come around the corner. All the numbers look really good. Yeah. Is that just this sport? It may, may be oil being carried down by the urethane ball in that lane. That's the only explanation I can offer. That right lane's a little tight down the lane anyway, but that looked pretty good to me. saw his ball do there. It was like somebody poured a big puddle of oil in the middle part of the lane. Watch this. That is unbelievable. The troop looking down the whole time and reading his book. He didn't even look up. Oh my God, goodness. Out of all the things. Nope. Yeah, well. And isn't that the other side of the sport? That wasn't nearly what we saw on the other side. Better shot on the other side, but this one strikes. Well, we saw Kent do it. We've, saw, we've seen Tackett do it. The only person that hasn't done it late is Kyle Troop. But no matter what EJ Tackett does here in the 10th frame, he cannot shut out Kyle Troop. Forcing the mark with a strike here. Come on, oh my goodness. One frame, the ninth, and it's all but over. Wow. Four straight television appearances for EJ Tackett. Now, this is hard to believe. He's on the cusp of not coming away with a win. Eight pins for Kyle True to win. He started this month writing another chapter to his legacy, a second major. All you gotta do is just get it. Now trying to close this month by penning a 12th title. And as he finishes one book, he writes another title yeah! chapter. Kyle Troop, the Indiana Classic Champion. Love you guys. Let's hear you, Crowley. Come on. Let's go. 25000 dollars Starting the month with a green jacket, Randy Peterson. Nobody had a better February than Kyle Trope. Yeah, oh, and uh, uh, he just might he, he may have just moved himself to the top of the list in the player of the year race. I know it's early, but Kyle Troop, two wins, one major. Your Indiana Classic champion. Hell of a baller, brother. Yeah. Keep it up. Coverage of the 2024 PBA season continues next Sunday, March 3rd on FS1 at noon Eastern with the PBA Delaware Classic from Mid County Lanes and Entertainment in Middletown, Delaware. Coming up next, it's Mountain West Conference Women's College Basketball.
Stars, UNLV faces Nevada. So for Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler, and our entire crew, I'm John Fanta. You've been watching the PDA on FS1, the king of Indiana, the king of February in the PDA this year. Let's go! Kyle Troop with his 12th title of his career. Good night, everybody. My boy, way to go, baby. Good job.